call this meeting to order. Please, let's stand and salute the flag. Today is September 26th. Officially, this is our first meeting for the school year since our students, faculty, and staff return to school. I want to welcome each and every one of you for being here today. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as follow. On January 10, 2024, notice was sent to the Home News Tribune, Star Ledger, Union County Local Source, Tapa Pinto Linden, and Clerk of the Municipality. By state law, there is no smoking permitted in this building at any time. In addition to the listed items in this agenda, this Board of Education may discuss and act upon other items not specifically referred to herein as is allowed or to regularly sunshine, schedule monthly board meeting under the Sunshine Law. Roll call. Ms. Thomas. Ms. Ulysse. Present. Ms. Armstead. Ms. Carrillo. Present. Ms. Cintron. Mr. Dela Cruz. Here. Ms. Pino. Present. And Dr. Berghammer. Present. Before I continue, I want to first welcome a very, very, very important person to our meeting. Remember, I always say the voice of our student is always and should always be the loudest voice in the room. So I want to welcome or student advocate. It's Shayla, how you pronounce your name? Shayla Kali. So please, you know, just tell us brief, I know you'll speak later on, but just briefly introduce yourself. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Shayla Kali. I am a senior at Linden High School. Um, in my free time, I enjoy reading. I like to um, go on walks with my dog. I'm very involved in ROTC. I'm a battalion commander, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, I'm also the president of my class. I've been the president of my class for uh, my sophomore, junior, and now senior year, and I'm very excited to be working with all of you today. Well, welcome, young lady. Now, did you get any scholarships for college yet? Uh, I have. How yes. much? 64,000. Well, you go, girl. <laughs> and you know, you have six months left, okay? So I think by the time you're ready to go to college, I am clocking in for you maybe at 200. <laughs> what do you think? At least. Yeah, I'm clocking in at least $200,000. A full ride. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. And you're giving her half of it, right? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. If I could, I would, you know. Anyway, welcome again. You know, I always like to say my little speech. As president of the Board of Education, I want to welcome back my board members. Several of these members I have worked with for several years. From the first day I met Miss Pino, she told me I am here for the students. And you know what? For the last three years, that's all she has ever said. I am here for the students. And she has always, always been an advocate for the students. Then I have Miss Ulysses here. <laughs> Miss Ulysses is not only a board member, but is a proud parent of how many kids? Four. Four kids that they attend where? 
London Public Schools. London Public Schools. So not only is she a voice <coughs> for the students, but she's an advocate for the students and a parent. You know, if we don't share it all the time, you guys tend to forget. So I always have to share the, the beautiful stories of our board members. Then I have Miss Sassia, the prettiest one on the board, you know, right? So Miss Sassia is a graduate of Linden High. All right, so she is someone who has not only sat on this side of the desk, but she's also a student. And she, she, when we are, have, we are having difficulties making decisions, what's the best, what's the loudest voice in the, in the room? A voice of someone who's been a student. And then I have Sam the only man on the board, and I'm telling you, he is difficult. <laughs> but one of the things I like about Sam is that, you know, a school is more than just education. It's security and the building. And Sam is always into security. He always focuses on the building and the safety of students, but he's also a parent. How many kids go to school in Linden? Two. Two. Don't you? And you have one graduate. I'm a senior this year and a seventh grader. All right. So the reason why I tell you the story of my board members is because sometimes people forget that the people who sit on this board, they they also have students in schools, and lots of times they face the same problems you face as parents, and they come to me and say, Doc, you know, so and so happened to my child. What am I supposed to do? I says you have to do the same thing a parent would do. You cannot use your position on the board to influence anything. You have to walk through the same child, the same steps, like every parent who has a child who has a situation that has to be dealt with. And me, I never thought I would say this. I feel like Biden. I'm the oldest person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it all right I would like to welcome all our new and returning students or faculty staff and all administrators to the 2024 2025 school year when a new school year begins it is time to reflect on our past or accomplishments or mistakes and the future and make the needed changes that are in the best interest of students and staff. I don't want to keep you long, but I do want to share what's on my mind. First, I hope everyone had a relaxing and restful summer because you all deserve it. In this next school year, I'm sure that every teacher is hopeful and expect great things from their students. And in turn, your students and parents expect great things from you. Public education is complicated. But what is not complicated is what happens to each and every student in the classroom. Learning is personal. And it is the responsibility of all of us to help each and every student discover their passion for learning. We need to stop spending so much time listening to experts and instead recognize and listen to our students. Understand how each and every student learn. Meet every student where they are and teach them. It is your wisdom and care that our students need. Start each and every day with a smile on your face. Your, st your students need to see that smile. Life for many of our students is hard. And a smile from their teacher, administrator, or principal can make a difference. Teachers, help your students learn. Help them smile, teach them to smile, and show them how to belong. Ask hard and interesting questions. Try new things. 
And you, as educators and teachers, it is all right to ask for help if you need it. Defend your students and empower them, and we will do the same for you. Go, be educators, and change the world. Thank you. Our next um, agenda item at this time, because I talk so much already, I think I'm going to turn it over to my co-counsel here today. So I'm going to turn it over to Sam. So Sam, could you start from approve the minutes, seeing I talk so much already? Thank you, Dr. B. This time I would like the approval of minutes, motion to approve minutes of the special meeting held on August 15th, 2024, work session held on August 27th, 2024, and the regular meeting held on August 29th. Copy in the hands of board members. Ask for a second. Second. Uh, Ms. Ulysse? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Burham? Yes. At this time, comments from the public. Agenda items only. Members of the public <clears throat> desiring to make a public comment may come forward at this time. For those watching online, if you wish to make a comment or ask a question, please utilize the raise your hand feature on the online meeting platform. Please begin your comments by stating your name and address. Individuals are invited to speak on one topic at a time, and no individual will speak more than once, until all individuals so desiring have spoken once. The public is reminded that to ensure the efficient and orderly operations of the meeting, members of the public will be limited to speaking on the agenda items for three minutes. Okay, guys, before you start speaking, you see we have a, a, a meter here that says three minutes. So it, it's going to um, go down. And when the three minutes is up, you get a beep telling you that your time to speak is over. Two people online. So nobody from the crowd wants to say anything here from the audience and want to speak? Okay, so you have two people in line? Okay. Good evening. My name is Cartel Hawkins-Reed. I reside at 730 Jackson Avenue. I'm calling in today because uh, just like last year, when my twin girls were sophomores, they sat in classes without instructor. Once again, we have started this school year and both of them are sitting in classes without teachers. The subject is anatomy. They both have aspirations to go into the medical field. So I would think that they would need this class as they show a high interest in learning from this subject. But however, Madam President, you spoke about uh, reflecting on the past. Did not you and your board consider my statements and remarks last year when I stood before you speaking of the same thing? You said to make learning personal. How can they make learning personal when they're sitting in the classroom with the substitute who is talking to them about any given subject except the subject they're supposed to be learning? As a taxpayer and lender, I expect my children to have an instructor, a qualified instructor, before them in every subject area. However, here we are yet again. And I'm not the only parent with this concern. As I uh, visited the board last year, there was another parent who came in to discuss the same thing. I didn't hear from anybody last year. And no, I did not go to Mr. Koontz because last year his answer was to push somebody in the um, uh, classroom that wasn't uh, licensed to teach the subject matter and to inflate grades. I had the proof in an email. So, Madam President, Superintendent, what is your solution? You are absolutely right. We should not be starting the new year like this. Mrs. Perkins, this problem has to be solved. The problem we have, though, is that it is so difficult. It is so difficult to find 
qualified teachers. We hired a, a, a director of personnel. We have been looking all over for teachers. It's like, even though teaching is an honorable profession, it is so, so hard to find the qualified teachers. We are getting to the point right now, Mrs. Perkins, where we even looking at looking outside the country. Yes, we are. To get teachers because it is so bad. What do you have to share? Thank you, um, Madam President. You are uh, correct with what you stated. We are actively seeking to find qualified teachers to teach the content-specific subjects. So what we're currently doing, actually our team is meeting tomorrow with an outside firm to um, look at qualified teachers outside of the country. In the meantime, we are also board approving teachers, science teachers, to go in and help with teaching the labs within the classrooms to assist with the certified um, substitute that, that's in that room. So teachers are going to be taken on an extra teaching period to try and help mitigate this problem for, as we're looking for a long-term solution. Um, I, I do have a communication thread with, with Mr. Kuntz and our science supervisor to, to speak on this matter further, just to ensure that we're uh, touching all areas and to see if there's anything else more that we can do. So we do hear you. Our goal is to provide quality education and we won't stop until we do. Listen, I want you to keep speaking because we would not know unless you share. So sharing is a good thing, okay? Madam we President, if I may, if, uh, I may before, if I may before my time is up, you were searching last year outside the country for teachers and have yet to find them. Um, and I do hope as a, uh, in my 29th year of teaching that my colleagues in your district who are taking on an extra teaching period, I do hope that they are going to be compensated for doing so. But since there is no teacher, I am formally requesting that my children's schedules be changed so that they are sitting in a class um, that they need with the qualified instructor. I no longer want them to spend days in a room where they are not learning and not being taught the, uh, the subject matter that they're supposed to do. Okay, I think she can reach out to Ms. Perkins yeah, so offline yes, and we yes, can we can, yes, we so can discuss. Please, this is not the forum, I yes. think, to discuss scheduling. Yes, so please, and and um, if you want to also email me, I would be more than happy to talk with you as well. But we could go on and on right now. Right now, what you need is to speak directly with uh, Mrs. Perkins and our director of curriculum. And, uh, you know, talk to them and see what we could do to help. And um, I'm, we have a lot of different things we are putting in place right now. Now, and um, you are heard, okay? Your thank voice you so is heard. Much. Okay, thank you. Just know another person online, and then yes. Yes, there's one more. Hi, Brenda Canister McManus Middle School, uh, 311 Higher Street in Palms River. Um, I just wanted to speak on the education report. Thank you. Lincoln Public Schools for giving Ms. Sirleaf and myself the opportunity to be the interns at um, our school for principal and educational leadership. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I apologize, but my idea did come up after I heard the person on the speaker. I don't think this is on, but I'll try to use my big voice. For anatomy. Name and address. Name and address. Oh, oh, oh I'm so sorry. Just, just a reminder, Halloran, Mr. Halloran, this is agenda items only. Oh, okay. I thought I was oh. talking about the comment, the <laughs> lady. Uh, she's online. I didn't want to interrupt her. I was trying to be accommodating. But okay, if, then I'll if, do this at the end of the day. No, we have another comment section at the end of the meeting. Yes, You're I'll, welcome I'll to speak to then. It. Yes. I'll talk at that time. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, at this time we'll go to the superintendent's report. There's someone else online? No. 
Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Yes, we are in the 24-25 school year, and I would like to just personalize um, this message to all of the faculty, staff, administration, and the students who have returned back here to school. We are on our 15th day of school, and I am pleased to announce that we have a 97% attendance rate of students being in school. We currently have 6,606 students actively on our register as of today. And I share that as far as student attendance with the 97% rate because that is one of our goals for this school year, is to push, educate, and expect our students are here because we are addressing chronic absenteeism. All of the research shows, as well as conversations from students and staff, is that in order to show up and show out, you need to just be actively here on a consistent basis. Each one of our schools have an attendance review team, and they are going to be looking at how else to ensure that we're being as proactive as possible and also mitigating any concerns that may come up as far as students being tardy or not in school. So this is the, the roar that we expect everyone to have this school year, which is to empower resilience, opportunities, achievement, and relationships. So when we speak of student attendance, come on out and be here. So again, welcome back. Also, I'd like to, at this time, is piggyback from Tuesday evening. Um, the board had a discussion on professional development, and it was determined it would be great to survey students on professional learning of the staff. My recommendation is to survey our, stu our principals, as they are the CEOs of their buildings. They're the ones who create the building goals, as well as the instructional strategies that's expected to come out in the classrooms. So hearing from the principals of what professional development they will approve for our teachers to ensure that student needs are being met. We can get great data on how else to support them and ensure that we're meeting professional expectations. Additionally, I'd like to share that we are um, in a great space where we receive um, a vast amount of funds from federal funding to support and offset our professional learning experiences for our teachers. So we'll have more information with that. To our parents, uh, please remember everything that we do is on our website, and we are pleased that it is translated in multiple languages, and it helps to provide you with building upon our home school connection. So if you have any questions, you can start with there. We are almost towards the end of this month, and we're going to be closing out our back-to-school nights. We've had a great return, I'm sorry, a great outpour of parents and guardians attending back-to-school nights to those translators who are there helping with seeking, um, supporting our parents with filling out lunch applications and just helping them to navigate through the school system. Thank you. Again, I'm going to remind everyone that the lunch applications, free and reduced lunches, there's a deadline to get those out by October 18th. The normal date is the 20th, but that is on a Sunday, so please fill out the reduced lunch forms. Thank you to our PTAs and PTOs for their participation. And yes, we want you all to sign up for each school level's parent um, back to parent teacher conferences, parent PTAs and PTOs. So please, we need you and to have a voice. For some upcoming things, we are pleased that some more of our elementary playgrounds are actively up and running. We'll be having ribbon cuttings next week for schools two and schools four, and school eight will be forthcoming. Also next week is Rosh Hashanah, so to those of you celebrating, we wish you um, a festive and, and happy holiday celebration. For upcoming, Events two, it will be National Bullying Prevention Month in October, Fire Prevention Month, National Principals Month, Polish Heritage Month. And we are pleased to announce that we have a second grader, School 9, Sophie Matus, and 
Linden High School graduate of 2024, Sonia Maiti, will be representing the city of Linden at the 87th annual Pulaski Day Parade serving as Miss Polonia. So congratulations to them. I will continue my presentation by um, turning it over to our student representative. And we are so pleased that Shayla said yes to this experience. When I met with um, Shayla to, to learn more about student life, she brought up some great ideas that um, we're pleased to announce. And for example, that is starting a student security advisory committee at the high school so that they can be in active communication with the building principal, Mr. Kuntz, and security just to hear students' voice. I do believe that student voice is choice to allow us to learn and grow, so we are excited that we do have um, innovative ideas coming from the student body. So before I do turn it over to Shayla, I'd like to also remind everyone that as comments are coming through for the Board of Education, please know that build and level concerns are always open and available if communicating with um, build and principals and administration, and then as well as my office. In order to learn and grow, we want to hear from you in the most proactive manner as possible. We're here to serve the community, and we are thankful that 24-25 school year is off to a great start. And so now I will turn it over to to Shayla to get the student report. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. So I just wanted to comment on a few things that um, the student body has been made, um, that have been telling me and been wanting to get um, things that they want to get addressed. Um, I just want to first make some comments on the dress code. I know that was an issue last year. Um, it wasn't really as enforced, and I feel like it was it was just an issue. People with actually following the dress code and, and getting um, any disciplinary action. Uh, we've noticed that this year it has been enforced a lot better. For instance, Mr. Kuntz and Ms. Orejuela are always in the main lobby in the mornings, ensuring that students have their IDs on, that they're following the proper dress code, that the yonder pouches, um, their cell phones are in the yonder pouches, and that everything's running smoothly, as well as Ms. Campo and Mr. Thurston. They're also in the cafeteria during breakfast each morning, making sure that everything is in line and that the rules are being followed. Uh, next thing is during lunch, an issue that students had was that students were leaving a lot of trash and garbage um, on the floors, and it was just, it was an issue. Um, for instance, like there would be like fries on the floor and, and just like wrappers, and it was just a very, it was in a great environment to be in. And what we've realized is that the lunch duty staff has been very proactive and they've been telling students to clean up after themselves, ensuring that, you know, they don't just leave their things, you know, sp like spilled over around. They make sure that they're being um, mindful and that they're cleaning up after themselves so that, you know, it's not as heavy for the custodians as well. Another thing is the phone searches with the yonder pouches. Recently, something that we've noticed that has been new is that the principal, VPs, and deans, our administration has been coming into classrooms ensuring that students have their phones in their yonder pouches. We think that this is a very good idea because it is one thing to be told, you know, put your phones in yonder pouches, but having people actually come in and check and ensuring that it's actually being followed, it's really good because it just, it makes students understand that this is something serious and it's not just something that's posted on the walls or that, you know, something that's said, it's something that is to be taken serious and it's for the benefit of our school. And to conclude, I just wanted to, um, let everyone know we do have a homecoming dance on October 17th on a Thursday. The theme is Party with the Gatsby's. We are very excited for this homecoming dance because we haven't had any homecoming dances or something like this in a very, very long time. Like this is my first homecoming dance in high school. So I'm very excited that me and my officers are able to make this happen for our school. This is gonna be open to juniors and seniors. And the homecoming is on October 19th as well. 
Love you. Thank you. Thank you. I am happy to hear that the high school is after a good start. And as you say, the principal and his vice principals and every hold steady to the goals and vision they have for the school, you will be pleased. And the students will be pleased, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And now I am going to transition. We will have a presentation by our district security um, in collaboration with our partnership with the Linden Police Department, as well as hearing from our principal at, from the high school, Mr. Kuntz. And the theme is wrapped around providing the community with reassurance that safety and security is our number one priority in our district. So we're going to use it's. You're going to use the screen here. Okay, um, that was just an introduction. Uh, earlier today, um, I had a presentation ready, and uh, Michael, our public information officer, and uh, Sardu, who does the videos for him, who honestly, these, these guys are doing a fantastic job. They had done an interview with me about security and about myself, and we cut it down. Um, every question that, that the board had wanted to hear was answered in this video. So I'm gonna, instead of me speaking from a PowerPoint, I'm gonna show the video so the public can see it too. And it will be posted once um, the entire interview will be posted so everybody can get every bit of information. We, did, we cut out some of the stuff like athletic security and things because people can read about that afterwards. But this will give the, the, the total idea about me and about what we've been doing at all our schools over the last uh, two years that I've had the position and where we're going in the future. So as soon as they're, uh, as soon as they're ready, you have anything to say right now, Mr. Kuntz, before we get going or? You've said it all. I said it all. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Charles Kuntz, uh, principal of Linden High School. Uh, as Director Asen has indicated, uh, we are working very, very hard to ensure the safety and security of our students. We take safety and security very seriously. Uh, we're thankful for our collaboration with the Linden Police Department. Uh, we are constantly in communication with all entities. And this year, we've, uh, I believe we've gotten off to a good start. Uh, we have several pieces in place that we're going to talk about. Uh, our, our student rep has indicated some of them uh, as it relates to the IDs and the student dress code uh, being heavily enforced, our yonder cell phone policy, our weapons detection systems, our vape detection systems. I think all of these are great mechanisms to ensure the safety and security of our students. Uh, we also have partnered with the uh, Legion security firm and they're working with us. Uh, we have security personnel in the building. Uh, working uh, throughout the day with two new supervisors uh, that are working hand in hand with staff, uh, our vice principals, our deans, we're collaborating, we're working with parents, we're working with students to ensure the safety of our, of our babies, which is very, very important. So uh, I'll turn it over back to Keith in the video and we'll let it get started. Okay, thank you everyone. This is a short video, but it should answer most everything. District Security Director for the Linden Public School District. I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself. I, um, I'm a life, I was born in Linden, born in Elizabeth, but I grew up in Linden. I went to school number eight, McManus, and Linden High School. Um, after college at Rutgers, Newark, I joined the Linden Police Department, where I worked for 28 years. I had a fantastic career. I was a sergeant in charge of community policing, and then for over 10 years, I was the Detective Lieutenant Juvenile Commander. I worked very closely with the schools and the superintendent um, on all uh, juvenile matters, investigations, along with DARE. Um, we had a great program, actually it was called Great of Gang Resistance Education and Training, but the grant went away and that was a fantastic program. Um, I retired um, after 28 years, and then um, the reason I came back as a Special 3 officer um, 
the school shooting in Parkland, it, it really affected me. And New Jersey had enacted a law where retired officers could come back and work in the schools uh, for security and safety. So I came back for three years to uh, Linden High. I worked as a specialty officer um, in Linden High School. And then I was given the opportunity after uh, the former security uh, director retired to take the position. Um, I, I love working this job. I love working in the city of Linden. It's been my whole, my whole adult career has been here. I truly care about the student safety and the staff safety. And I work every day just on the goal of everyone comes in safe and everyone goes home safe. At our high school level, we, we of course, we have um, on our app, we have our camera system, we have our access control, and we do, um, we've enhanced um, our training of our security staff, we've enhanced uh, the number, um, and that's to be in the hallways, their, 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 their function is to watch and to assist and um, de-escalate. That's the main function um, of the high school security. We have dedicated people watching our camera system so that we have the outside access and inside always being monitored. Um, at the middle school level, it's kind of like a smaller level than the high school. We have security staff. Um, we have um, outside security. We've added in this year, we've added the open gate weapons detection system to the middle schools. Um, we're, uh, and down at the elementary level, we are, um, we work with the police, we work with our emergency services to make sure everything's safe there. Especially in regard to um, drop-off pickup, we've been working um, hand in hand with the traffic bureau, trying to come up with the best possible ways. It's, it's difficult. A lot of parents are bringing their kids at the same time. We're trying always different uh, ways to make it safer for everybody so that the kids get into school safe and everybody gets out at the end of the day. Basically, our district works on a layered plan. So we work from our community layer. We're all neighborhood schools here. We have 12 different buildings. Um, Academy of Excellence, of course, is part of the high school, but it's its own separate building. Um, so they're all community-based. So we look at it from a community level to our borderline, to our parking lots and driveways, to our doors or access control, to our inside. Um, we uh, we have security staff at our high school and middle schools. Um, we have we have been upgrading and enhancing our camera systems. We've been upgrading and enhancing our access control and visitor pass management. And anything that comes along, we, we change. Um, uh, a system that the board had approved a year ago and will be going online very soon, the lockdown emergency notification system, which will allow the um, schools to lock down immediately by a press of a button, by a, nine, by a call from within the building, which will lock our doors, which will um, automatically get the information out and automatically notify the police department by telephone call and by text message. So we're, we're, we've improved on that, or enhanced. It, 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 and, it, and it wasn't in regard to any specific threat, we just want to make it better. We want to make the response time better. It, it's always about just improving what was there because the district had it, had, had it set up, but we just, since I've taken the job, I just want to always improve it and make it better at all times. So we, we continue with the board and the, it, with the leadership of the district, we continue to add and enhance and improve on what was already a good system. We, we just keep the make, we're trying to make it better all the time and keep up with the times and the technological advances that come in security. When we all, the staff that's here that was trained to be on the threat assessment teams, we're trained in the U.S. Secret Service model. It's an open source document. Anybody wants to go on, they could look um, and see what it says of how we follow it. And basically, if a, a concern or uh, say someone does something on the internet that is reported to the school, uh, the principal gets it at first. They'll get, they'll get our team together, which is a multidisciplinary team. Um, I'm just a member of it. The principal's just a member of it. Everybody that comes in on this, you have, by, by the statute, an administrator has to be involved, a school social worker or psychologist, um, school safety specialist, which I cover, um, 
teachers, security staff, law enforcement can be involved if, if we choose to. We do have uh, special three officers, or those are retired officers who work at the high school in McMadison, so um, they're on the teams. And everybody's just giving their, their expertise on a subject. And all of us, you get into a room and we, we discuss it. it. And it's something that went on in the past, from what I remember. The principals would always do this, you discuss it. But now it's more put into a, a pattern. We follow the questions, we have a policy, which we follow what the state of New Jersey wanted. And um, so as soon as it comes in, it'll go from we have we have a tip or a complaint of some of strength of behavior. And then we'll meet as a team. We'll go through the questions. If it's something where it's decided that it needs to go to law enforcement, we call law enforcement. If it's something that can then be, if it doesn't have to go that route, but we need more counseling, we can go the route of that. If we need to call in a child study team, we call in a child study team. If we need to be, uh, to send you, someone out to you outside counseling, we can do that. Um, so it's all truly all about, it's not a punitive uh, process. It's a proactive process to help the student or person to um, work through their problems or why they feel this way. Um, we did um, probably in every, actually we did, we had one in every school last year. Um, nothing major, um, but we worked through the process and got the kids to the uh, counseling they needed. Um, which is what the plan is. We, we don't want something bad. We, we want to catch in advance and get them the help they need. And the management part of that is then reviewing it and managing it and going back to make sure everything's okay. We work with them on a daily basis. I, um, I'm in contact with the juvenile bail and traffic bureau probably every work day. And if something happens on the weekends, they call me and, and I either give them information that they need or uh, work in conjunction with them. Um, we, I, I monitor the Linden Police radio every day to know if something is going wrong in the town. Um, that's a sort of Linden Police provided me with so that I can know and that, so that if we do have police activity near our schools, I can notify the principal or administrator as quickly as possible if we do need to go into a shelter place, if we do need to go into a lockdown for some reason. It's always there. Um, Linden, the Linden Fire Department works fabulously with us in regards to ambulance services or sporting events. They come out and provide uh, instruction and advisement in our fire drills to our principals. Um, our police department comes out at least once a year as per law, but they come out multiple times to help uh, and advise us if we're doing our best at our lockdown drills, if we're doing our best in our shelter in place. We, we have a, Linden is a special, special community, it truly is, and I know I grew up here and I'm biased by that, and I love this city, but it is a case of, it is truly special where our local government, our district, work hand in hand. We really work closely for the betterment of the parents and the students and the community at large. Everybody wants our children to be safe in school. The police department is always there for us and we work hand in hand with them. It truly is. I didn't realize it when I took it and I get phone calls every night in case they're, uh, they're doing investigations and they need something from me. Uh, but I love it. I truly do. I, I really, it's become a, it was my lifetime job keeping people safe down the police. And I really just love uh, what I do here. I love that I've got a staff, our in-house staff is security. We have an out outside company at the high school and middle schools too. But we're all focused on the same thing, that every child and staff member comes in in the morning safely and leaves safely. And that's our goal every single day, that, that we can get that test done. We have excellent cooperation. I mean, the Linden Police Department, I worked there, I, I've known them for years, um, and the fire department, I know the people that work there. Um, anything we request, they're, they're just great. They, um, from the mayor on down, everybody um, is supportive of the schools, and they all want the same thing. They all want our events to run smoothly. They want everybody to be safe. And I can't say enough about Linden Police and Fire and Emergency Management, those, those volunteers that come out and block our streets for the game for basketball games, anything we request. They're, they're always there for us, 
and what they need from us, we always provide to because Linden is one big team. Linden is one big family. Uh, we may be the school district, it might be the city, but we're all one and the same, working towards the same goal of keeping the city safe. I, I just want us all to have a safe and successful year. I want all of our students to do great, learn as much as they can. I want our sports team to win. I mean, I, I, I wear orange, I love, I love, I wear tigers every day. I, I love the Linden Tigers. And I just really hope Linden is as successful as possible and we all have a great school year. Thank, thank you to Michael and to uh, Sardou. Um, they did a fantastic job on this. It, it jumps around a little bit because it was question and answer with Michael. So you might have got some things said once or twice. But um, I do mean it. I know I come across all the time saying I do love Linda. I truly do. I truly care that every one of your students come in every day and go home safe at the end of the day. And the staff members. We're all one big family. I, I say it, I mean it. it it's. Uh, this is a special place, and um, I, Detective McPhail is going to come up soon. He works here. He, he works. The Juvenile Bureau does so much that people don't know. They're constantly working on keeping our children safe, doing investigations for us. And Mr. Kuntz is working. We, we joke. We're, we're talking seven days a week because we're constantly working on what we can do to make things better. So um, mm -hmm. we do have a short couple slides Mr. Kuntz has right now. I'll bring him up, and then we'll bring up Detective McPhail. I know it, we're, we don't want to go too long. Thank you. So I'll be brief. Uh, we did a SWOT analysis of the high school, uh, which identifies our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's an assessment tool that businesses use to do just that. Um, you can move forward to the slides. The first couple of slides basically have already been uh, expounded upon through the video and Keith's message. Uh, I'll go right to the analysis and just highlight a couple of points. Okay. Just this one? Okay. It's not, this is not the one. It's the other, this is, this is this the other one with the uh, SWAT analysis on it. Keith already has gone over these these points. It's the other one that I gave you with the SWAT? It's not on here. I can just talk to it mm -hmm. um, while you guys look for it. Um, we started with the security piece, as I indicated earlier, one of the strengths that we identified was the fact that we've partnered with an outside security firm, uh, Legion uh, Security. They have brought personnel in. We have them as well as our in-house security. We have two supervisors that are working around the clock uh, to make sure that everyone is at their assigned location. We have rotation schedules. Uh, we have different formations that we run throughout the day to make sure that our perimeter is secured to make sure at the end of the day during dismissal we have people outside posted up at the perimeter to ensure that communication uh, is viable and everyone's on the same page to ensure that our babies get on the bus safely to ensure that they get home safely as best we can uh, so that's one of the strengths one of the weaknesses uh, that we identified is that we're still new right we're still a new team of people that are coming together to work together so as with any new team people take time to gel learn each other's work styles, communication styles, expectations. So that's one of the, the weaknesses. In terms of the opportunity, we have a great opportunity to come together and work at a high level uh, with all of the mechanisms that we have in place. Uh, in terms of the threat, we're still trying to make modifications uh, with our infrastructure. We have two buildings, uh, two buildings uh, with a uh, lake behind the building, which creates some challenges in terms of infrastructure, in terms of monitoring students as they're uh, commuting back and forth across the highway to different classes. We have our freshman population. They're still going through the maturation process of uh, having certain liberties that they didn't have in middle school. 
schools, so we're still helping them adjust. So those are the pieces that we've identified in terms of our SWOT analysis for security. Then we have our Yonder pouches, our Yonder cell phone system. Uh, as Shayla indicated again, we are really holding the line, if you will, making sure that the policy is upheld. Uh, we're, we have signage up throughout the building. We're making announcements constantly. We know that the cell phone is a gift and a curse, and we're trying to educate our students to understand that it is a distraction to instruction. We want them to be focused in the class. We want them to be engaged. We want them to be social with their peers and their teacher in a constructive manner, right, without the cyberbullying and the mischief and all of the negative things that come with the cell phone. So we have laid out that particular plan, our weakness again, the fact that the cell phone is again a gift and a curse. The opportunity is that once we become a totally cell phone free environment, it will improve our level of instruction and social interaction with our with our babies. And again, the threat is the mischief, the cyberbullying, all of the negative things that we're all hearing. There's tons of research out now on how the cell phone has created a lot of distractions and we're trying to move away from that. The last piece I'll talk about is our dress code. We are really uh, moving forward with the dress code uh, in terms of letting students know that they can't wear hats, they can't wear hoods, they can't do these things because we are preparing them for the real world. In the real world, they have to be dressed for success, they have to be professional, so the high school is a preparation for that. So we are indicating that day in and day out, okay, with signage and communication, we're in the halls, uh, we're letting students know that they can't dress provocatively, that's inappropriate, we're constantly sending those messages. And I think, again, we're off to a great start and we're going to continue uh, as we move forward with these initiatives. So again, we're partnering with, with everyone in the community, our community partners, to ensure that everyone is on the same page. So that's basically where we are uh, with safety, security, uh, dress code, uh, the Yonder cell phone policy. Uh, also, I forgot to mention we have vape detection systems in the bathrooms. Uh, that was a big problem last year with students vaping and, and engaging in those activities. Uh, so this year, again, we, we have the vaping system in place. We get notifications to our smartphones, to our uh, computer systems when the vape detection system goes off. Uh, we have our hall monitors. We have our surveillance cameras that all the, automatically activate to pinpoint exactly the location that the vape detector was uh, triggered. And our safety people, they immediately uh, are deployed to that location and we figure out what's going on. Uh, we work with our SAC, with our counselors, uh, to make sure that the student is tested and goes through the proper uh, channels to get uh, intervention and proper health care uh, to move forward. So at, that, at this time, this is where we are at the high school uh, with safety, security, uh, and all of those pieces. I'll turn it back over to uh, Mr. Aslan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. And finally, um, I'm sorry about our PowerPoint. This slide, we just had some technical difficulties. I'm going to bring up Detective Jason McPhail. He works in our juvenile bureau. Um, him, the um, Detective uh, Stephanie Diaz, Detective Steve Zevlikaris, and Detective Jabari Schultz, Lieutenant Mekovitz, and Sergeant Christian Ramirez. They do an excellent job for us. They, honest. It's like I'm still there, They're, we're still one team. <laughs> but they really helped the school district so much. And I just want to let me, give them a few minutes to say. Hello all, Detective Jason McPhail in the Police Department, Juvenile Aid Bureau. Um, I have a screenshot of our uh, PowerPoint there. Um, I'm also uh, one of five uh, instructors for our LEAD program, which took over for DARE. It's the Law Enforcement Against Drugs and Violence. Um, we teach it to the fifth grade classes. This uh, year, last year we did school, uh, school one and school four. The year before that we did school eight. And this year we're gonna do school two and six. And as uh, more of our officers get uh, trained to be instructors, we'll finish up the other schools and we'll have it in all the schools simultaneously um, first and second semester. It's a 10 week program and the kids seem to love it. It's science based. It's not, it's not like how DARE was where the, the state kind of 
felt that there wasn't uh, effective. The lead is a lot more effective. It's more interactive. We uh, show them um, how to manage their uh, emotions, uh, relationships. Um, of course, so with the, with the anti-bullying and, and cyber harassment and how to navigate the internet to st uh, stay from things like sextortion and, and things like that that are affecting them with the technology this, uh, that we're dealing with now. Um, we also um, we do work uh, very closely with the with all the schools, um, but I talk to Keith daily, <laughs> um, and we are the juvenile aid bureau, so we're not um, here to. Um, just do investigations. We're here to assist on um, the children in, in maturing to the next level and becoming, you know, positive and, and, and uh, productive adults in society when they graduate. Um, we also have uh, our traffic bureau is uh, in charge of the uh, them crossing the highway, you know, Route 27. That's a major thing going on. Our traffic bureau handles uh, everything with the crossing guards and traffic and everything that needs to be handled on that aspect. And again, like, we're here to support the, the school system, and anybody can call us at any time. Uh, we give presentations on, on internet safety, uh, harassment, cyberbullying, uh, intimidation, whatever's needed, we're, we're here for you. Thanks. Thank you, Detective McPhail. And uh, thank you all. I know it was a little bit of a longer uh, presentation, but um, I really wanted to get it across to you, and, and, and the videos seem to really get all the information. Um, if you do ever need to reach me, um, it's just kazlinden at lindenps.org. Um, you can reach Mr. Kuntz at ckuntz at lindenps.org. And the Linden Juvenile Bureau, everyone has their own, but they also, you, you can just call Linden Juvenile, and you can reach out to them. And thank you for, uh, thank you for allowing me the time to come. One question? Okay. Oh, if anyone has any questions, you can come up and ask any questions. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharita Morgan. Uh, I reside at 1216 Monmouth Avenue, PTA president. Um, I'm so glad, thank you so much for your presentation because uh, we did have some questions. Uh, there's one parent that was asking about the bus routes being changed when there's no traffic light, they're not next to a traffic light because uh, she, there was a, a, a an intersection Wood Avenue and 19th Avenue, and she felt like it wasn't safe for the kids to get off. She also wanted to know if the bus aides are required to assist uh, students getting off the buses. So is it possible to change the bus routes to a place where, I'm sorry, the bus stops, the place where there are traffic lights is the question. The, bus, the, the city bus stop or the school bus route stop? School bus route stop, sorry. Right. Okay, and then um, uh, you're also talking about the drop-offs and pick and pick up. Now, now this is my mom hat now, okay, because my daughter uh, goes to school for, and um, there used to be the back uh, parking in the back. Now, I saw them um, putting gates around, so I know it's for the safety of the students, right? So I understand that part. But I was wondering if my husband, we were talking about that this morning, if they could be someone there to assist and move traffic along, because sometimes parents get frustrated, sometimes parents are arguing with other, you know, with each other, and we're just worried that there may be an accident or someone might get into a fight, <laughs> you know? So that's my other question. Yeah. Um, we have since um, board approved, and um, we're working on, we're, we're at the point, Holly, by the beginning of October, uh, Legion Protection Services who are providing security for the high school, middle school. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be placing one in each elementary. Oh, and we're excellent. We're going to be there to assist uh, the principals. In regard to the main thing is drop off, right. pick up, to assist them in the transport board, and then their other function will be with, for the elementary level, they can drop and then it'll be there to assist, be an extra set of eyes. Okay. Be there to be there. And if there is not to be some kind of disturbance to assist the school. It's the same thing I tell the security staff. Um, 
Well, the police department, right away. it's what, it's mm -hmm. what they're there for. Just mm -hmm. call um, if they see something, and it's something yesterday, Mr. Uh, Michael put out from the Department of Homeland Security. If you see something, say something. Call mm -hmm. well, police. They, they, okay. There's never a there's never a wrong time to call if it has to do with our children. Just as people call, and if, but we have worked for our family for whole purpose that gave me the back because mm -hmm. people were zooming in. Right. Kids were lining up, and we needed the gate just to stop it. And that's the purpose of the gates that we've been adding around the district. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about the safety of our students to stay out there. It's, I understand parents want to help their children as close as possible. Mm -hmm. But we also have to use more kids. Absolutely. I agree. I have one more question, but that's about the yonder pouches. So should I wait till later? The president? Yeah. No, President Coots. <laughs> So um, we know that the Yana pouches have been an issue at every PTA meeting. Uh, the Yana pouches have been an issue at every PTA meeting. Uh, the main issue for parents is uh, safety, and I know that's the main issue for you as well, right? So you're on the same page there. Um, parents are concerned that they won't be able to reach their children, um, or their children won't be able to reach them in case of emergency. But also, sometimes there may be a change, and maybe there's a club, we talked about this, and parents want to be able to communicate with their kids and then be updated. Um, and uh, a solution or, or a suggestion came out of the PTA meetings that maybe students during the day, they can use email, and they can email their parents back and forth if they need to alert their parents about something that's not emergency related, right? Now, like, it's a lockdown situation, but they just need to communicate and parents communicate as well until they get their yonder pouches. And we're thinking that way, they can still have access to each other, uh, but also the distractions are not, the cell phones are not a distraction in the classroom. So it kind of takes care of both sides. And we just want to know your feedback on that. That's, that's great, and I think um, what the PTA can do to help is to, to relay this information throughout the school year. I, I think that this needs to be an ongoing discussion um, where even, even though parents have been given this information, just so they can feel a little more comfortable and they know about all the different ways that their kids can contact them if, they, if need be. So um, we'll continue to get, relay this information throughout the school year, and then um, we've been talking about making sure the parents are telling, we're telling our kids to follow the yonder pouch policy, you know, and uh, make sure that they, you know, uh, follow the rules in that way as well. So uh, there's no distraction in the classroom, parents and the kids can communicate. I don't think there should be an issue after that, you know, if both sides are heard and both sides, uh, you know, we continue this conversation. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking time to listen. Thank you very much for the security presentation. 
I'd also like to highlight our partnership with the Linden Police Department and the Safe Routes to School program. This program has been initiated for more than a decade to encourage students to ride their bikes to school and for student safety en route to and from school. So we have two more schools who were recognized as safe routes to schools, and that is school numbers eight and nine, and there was a reception today um, honoring them for reaching bronze status of silver, silver status, sorry, thank you, Mr. Walker, um, for carrying out, carrying out initiatives to support the safe routes to schools. So congratulations to those schools and now I it's bittersweet for me to acknowledge and a retirement that is on the agenda this evening we have miss Karen Seaman she is one of our secretaries in the superintendent's office miss Seaman started her career in the Linden Public Schools in 2002 as a part-time aide and then in 2003 she became a secretary for the in the superintendent's office and she completed completed 21 years. She just submitted a letter stating that December 1st will be the new beginning of a retirement journey. So I'd like to say congratulations to Ms. Seaman. Job well done. You will be missed. And now I'm going to turn it over to um, the board. We are, um, as I sit here as part of the board, um, I think it's fitting that we um, just take a moment. So I'll start with um, asking for Ms. Dianara Caseda Rosada to please come up. Um, Ms. Rosada has uh, retired off of the board last month, and now she's here because we'd like to acknowledge and just overall recognize her for her contributions to the Linden Board of Education. Mistress, Miss Dianara, you know, I, I have had a very high highs with you and very low lows with you. We laugh together, we cry together, but I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart I love you, and I'll miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Miss Dianara. Welcome. It's not only an honor, it's also my pleasure to read this out loud. Whereas Dianara Rosero Casala served as a member of the Board of Education of the City of Linden from 2023 to 2024, and, where, and whereas Dianara Rosado Casada served faithfully and diligently as a board member and whereas Dianara Rosado Casada's commitment to quality education, value participation and establishing policies and readiness to render services and seeking educational excellence have contributed, have contributed immeasurably to the progress of our school system. Be it resolved that on behalf of your colleagues, teachers, and students, we thank you for your dedicated services and wish you good health and happiness in the years to come. Thank you. She wants to say something. It is. Can I say something? Of course. Okay, because I did wrote something for you guys. It is very sweet. I'm happy to be here. I feel home out here. When I came in uh, to the meeting, I was like, oh my God, yes, this is my place. Um, dear school district superintendent, school district board members, members of the city, it has been a real honor representing the parents and children of this city as one of your elected board members. <clears throat> I had the opportunities to learn a lot about the operation of our schools. And I feel proud to have made what I call the superheroes of our town, the teachers, 
the school faculties who dedicated, uh, who educated my, our kids solely to enhance their knowledge and equip them for their futures in our society. During my tenure as a board member, I can assure you that I was committed to safeguard our children even after facing an irreparable loss. I decided to serve the families and children of our city. With all my ethics and moral values, ensuring that every decision I made aimed to improve our school system. Life has taught me the importance of cherish, cherishing um, the time I spend with my family. We never know what the future can have. And I'm here to honor them and continue my education and my academic goals in pursuing my master's. Unfortunately, coincide with the time I need to spend as a board member, which I wouldn't allow me to fully fulfill my responsibility. I always took my role as a board member very seriously. Even during the most difficult times in my life, I realized that I wanted to serve the families and children of, our, of my city, advocating for their careers and helping pave their way to success. Therefore, out of respect of all of you, I have no other choice but to take the difficult decision to resign from my position <clears throat> on the board last month. I am proud of the work we achieve, but I still believe it could have been more productive for the children of our city in many ways. I still think there is a lot to do for them, and I'm convinced that each one of you board members will continue to work hard in achieving those goals for the benefits of our school district. I want to thank Mayor Derek Amsterd for having me approach to show me how, to, how could I make a difference in the city as serving as a board member. I owe a tremendous deal of gratitude to my husband and former president of the Linden Board of Education, Carlos Rivas, who taught me the joy of serving our city. I owe a tremendous amount of gratitude to my children and family who not only encourage, but support me to spend numerous hours away from them. And I also wanted to thank the members of my community who believe in me and elected me to this position at a service in our city. This is not a farewell. I am still committed to seeing you again. And I will, be, I will be pleased to continue supporting all the activities the school district and the city will require me, cry of me. I want you to know that while serving as a board member, I always upheld the highest level of ethics and respect that everyone deserves, which each decision my action would require. Thank you, colleagues, board members, and friends. One of my greatest experiences was working with all of you. Please keep in mind that you can contact me at any time. And I will do everything in my power <coughs> to work together for better days in our schools, the children and the citizens of Linden. I will always love you. And I pray for blessings for each one of you. God bless you all and thank you. Gonna go, yeah, we all have to go. You go, you go, go over there by the tiger's backboard. Yes, come on, you're the president, you're the superintendent, you gotta come. Right, you getting up? Yeah, my knee hurts.
Meet me over here. <laughs> so, the Linden Public Schools Board Member Service Award. The certificate is being awarded to Board Member Dianara Rosado Casada in grateful recognition for your four year for your years of service and dedication to the children of the Linden Public Schools. something in that uh -huh. big briefcase, nothing. Oh my God. This is cool. We're not supposed to have gone to school. <laughs> we to I always need to be back your father. Uh -huh. Man. <laughs> she didn't open it. Cinnamon jelly beans. I smell like cinnamon. And that concludes the superintendent's report. You know, one of my most exciting events is that it takes a village award. And I know we didn't do that tonight, but next month, right? Yes, ma'am. Next month, we're gonna have some great awards to give out because I really, really believe it takes a village to raise a child. Right? Yes, it does. So the, this is our second annual It Takes a Village initiative that the board has implemented where it highlights our community partnerships. So we are pleased to um, kick it off in October as we are can build in the relationships now. So our board meeting in October will be on the 17th and we are excited for that. And Ms. Perkins, before we move forward, I know that you and Miss Annabelle and one of our board members recently went to what a woman's leadership conference. Would you be kind enough to share to this board and the public 
uh, what happened recently in that meeting? Yes, thank you. District Administration is an organization that is, supports educational leaders around the nation. It targets superintendents. They have annual superintendent summits. This was the first year that they carried out a three-day summit women's lead hership event, which was built around six principles of uh, research-based tenets for effective leadership. The effective leadership tenets revolved around positive self-talk, understanding the role of a mentor, having a coaching model, and also what it takes to lead. So over these three days, we had speakers from all across the nation, from New York to California, and including Hawaii, where they came in and did breakout sessions on um, how to network, as well as those leading principles around education today. Those trends revolved around chronic absenteeism, student achievement, and more importantly, how to lead in 2024. We um, partnered with one of our board members who came because it is key to build upon the governance relationship. And um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, through the networking and conversations that were carried out, that they are expanding their women's leadership event next year and they're going to um, push for more board members to be in attendance because they do believe that there is power when there is a positive collaboration and connection and meeting the needs of the students. Um, and so finally over those three days it was jam-packed. It started at 7.15 a.m. and ended by 9 p.m. each day. Um, and, and through those sessions we, we networked and, and we learned um, just new principles of, of how to to relate. We have a student population of 6,607 students and uh, we collaborated with districts who had over 30,000 students and also how to um, address um, security and again more importantly making sure that your voice is heard as a female leader in 2024. Uh, as in addition to what Ms. Perkins shared, we truly had an amazing experience. Uh, the entire three days was filled with empowerment, uh, enriching activities, and professional learning that were all research-based. And so it was really invigorating to partner and collaborate with district leaders throughout the nation. Again, partnering with superintendents that are leading districts, sizes of 50,000, 60,000, and really discussing um, some challenges, but with a lens of focusing on the outcomes and identifying strategies to impact student outcomes. And so we've, um, Mrs. Perkins and I have already been discussing how we're going to take back some of, bring back some of the information that we learned and turnkey it with our administrators, but also our entire district. So we're excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. Lady, this time we'd like to continue with our attorney report. Thank you. Um, we have one item on my report tonight. We spoke previously, There's a, we have a litigation um, in which the district is named, but also one of our individual employees is named, and that individual, um, as is her right, has requested uh, a certain council, and as long as that council is within our rates, we, we can give it consideration. So that is on the agenda for tonight. This is, again, a matter that we discussed uh, on Tuesday. If anybody, I don't want to go into any more details because it is legal, so if anybody has any specific questions, I'll ask that we go into closed session and I can answer them quickly, and then we can come out and vote if there are questions. Well, I make a motion to approve the hiring of this firm in order to assist our employee because it is all right. We need, you know, we got to get the, yeah, we, we have, have to have the If we want to have any discussion, we should have it no. inside, but otherwise, no. uh, I mean, I, I, I moved it, and if there, if somebody can, can yes. make a second, you can call I give it a second. So we have no discussion on it now. If, if you, you want a discussion, you want to go back. Yes. Go in the back. If you want to go in the back? No, I'm good with it. Yeah. You're good with it? Yeah. Good with it yeah. We don't need to discuss? Okay. I'm then good with it. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Julies? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Bergen? Yes. Motion passed. And now, um, the Education Committee? Good evening, everyone. 
The Education Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and Assistant Superintendent, presents the following motions to the Linden Board of Education to approve. I approve item one through 40. I respectfully ask for a second. Second. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Any discussions that we may need? No. no. Roll sorry. call, please. Ms. Julies? Yes. Uh, Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Barajano? Yes. Is our personnel person here? No, you can do it. Okay, so I'll read for the personnel. The Personnel Committee, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, presents the following motions of the Linden Board of Education for approval. All appointments and reappointments are contingent upon and may be modified based on student participation and the district's receipt of sufficient state school aid and other revenue funding. So, yes, we're going for items one through 50. I ask for a second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Julies? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Bergham? Yes. You know. <laughs> Okay, so um, when we interview um, candidates for personnel, I always remind them that this is the process. While we don't give individual shout outs of the employment, we do shout you out collectively and say congratulations on your appointment. Um, so you are approved. So you're officially hired with Linden Public Schools. And at this time, if there's anyone who would like to speak on your new appointment, you may come up to the podium at this time. They're shy. I can't believe that Clarissa has nothing to say. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Clarissa Lane. My address is uh, I live in Linden. I've been working with our district since 2008. I started with Linden after I raised my children. Once my children were safely put into Linden Public School number five, I became full-time employed as a substitute teacher. Uh, I am now honored and excited to accept this appointment as confidential secretary to human resource where I have been working for the last three years as a secretary in the office. And I just want to say thank you to everyone around. And I'm so excited for my new position. Have a good afternoon. Oh, good evening. Richard Blocker, uh, just want to say thank you and I appreciate the opportunity. Mr. Blocker, thank you. That's the best you know, I, I was sitting here trying to, everyone's like, who is she talking to? I was talking to his wife, Miss Card Blocker, <laughs> in the background, you know. Um, all right, congratulations to the Blocker family, okay. <laughs> Anybody in line? <clears throat> okay, moving forward to the finance report. The Finance Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and a Business Administrator Board Secretary, present the following motions to the Linden Board of Education for approval. I approve items 1 through 36. I respectfully ask for a second. Second. Any discussions? Roll call. Ms. Shulees? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Berghammer? Yes. Okay, buildings and grounds. 
the Buildings, Grounds, and Security Committee upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator. Board Secretary present the following motions to the Linden Board of Education for approval. Number one through number 10. I kindly ask for a second. Second. Any discussion? I'm sorry. You said one through 10, I'm sorry. You said one through 10. Okay, sorry about that. No discussion? I should see. Sorry. You good? I'm excellent, thank you very much. John, three o'clock. <laughs> Roll call, please. Ms. Ulysses? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? I would like to recuse myself from item five. Yes to all other items. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Bergen? Yes. And the planning and policy report? Read it also. The Planning and Policy Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, present the following motion to the Linden Board of Education for approval. The first reading, Policy Guide 2200, Program Curriculum Content, 3160, Teaching Staff Members Physical Examination, 5337, Students and Service Animals, 7231, to abolish property gift from vendors. 8467, Operations, Firearms and Weapons. 9181, Community, Volunteer Athletic Coaches and Co-Curricular. And then Regulation Guide, 5200, Students and Attendance. And 8467, Operations, Firearms and Weapons. I ask for a second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Ulees? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Bergen? Yes. And now we're coming down to the end of our meeting. So at this time we will take comments from the public. Members of the public desiring to make a public comment may come forward at this time. For those watching online, if you wish to make a comment or ask a question, please utilize the raise your hand feature on the online meeting platform. Please begin your comments by stating your name and address. Individuals are invited to speak on one topic at a time, and no individual will speak more than once, until all individuals so desiring have spoken once. The public is reminded that to ensure the efficient and orderly operations of the meeting, members of the public will be limited to speaking on items for three minutes, and we have our clock. Anybody? Hello, my name is Jill Carolyn Famula, um, Rumson, New Jersey. I, uh, although I don't live in Linden, uh, I've considered Linden my home and my family since 1997. Um, I started preschool teaching <coughs> preschool disabled uh, at school 10, and now I'm fortunate enough to uh, be part of the soul, amazing soul staff. Um, I am also uh, recently have become the uh, chair of the negotiating committee for our future contract negotiations. And I just wanted to come and introduce myself. And um, I look forward to a pro productive dialogue and um, a win-win for both sides. Thank you. Craig Hallern, 120 Donaldson Place. Uh, Tuesday night, I had asked something about the firearms and weapons policy. I hope I have it understood over the past 24 hours. I was thinking about my comment. Uh, in the policy on page two, it says any student or staff member that uh, know, knows about somebody having a weapon or firearm in the school and does not bring it to the attention of the appropriate people in the school system is subject to discipline. I hope that, you know, on the surface it reads like if somebody has a weapon and the person next to them is intimidated because that person has a weapon uh, and they're afraid to bring it forward, 
that you know because they didn't bring it forward it does sound like automatically that person will be disciplined i do hope that it means that on the inve or during the investigation they would find out that this person was or felt intimidated or bullied and therefore the discipline may not be necessary for the person that didn't report the issue uh, I know I'm only allowed to talk about one topic at a time, but I, I do realize I have more time. Uh, <laughs> during the presentation on security, I do thank the people for that. It was a great presentation. I handed Ms. Perkins a note about using nurses to teach anatomy temporarily, and she informed me that they probably cannot do that. Uh, but my question is, doesn't the school board hire outside medical professionals to do uh, medical services in the school system. So why during the <coughs> process of contracting these uh, services out to outside providers, why don't we put a, something in there that says, hey, you know, you're a doctor, you're a professional nurse or nursing supervisor. Part of your contract says that you will come in and help teach this particular subject, which is not an easy subject to teach add this to a contract and say, hey, we're paying you good money. We want you to come in. Not only will it help the school system with a shortage of teachers, it will also help promote the idea of students wanting to go into the medical field. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. O'Halloran. Um, to your first part of your question, yes, everybody is re receives due process. And so it says subject to discipline. Um, it's based on information shared. So our goal is always just to keep everyone safe and not to punish anyone for, for sharing information or lack thereof. So a full investigation always takes place. And secondly, you gave a great idea. Thank you for that, the paper that you gave. Um, but one thing I like to remind everyone is that you have to be certified to teach. You would either have to have a substitute license or you would have to be certified within that subject area. Um, so, so thank you for that but there could be other ways too that we do bring in medical professionals or others within our community that can just share and come in through like a, um, a presentation purpose to just, okay. as you stated, to expose students to the field. Okay, then my question is, in parts of these contracts that we put out for professional services, why don't we include the fact that somebody in the organization that we hire for medical services has to be teacher certified and therefore, we would be able to use them in this case where this woman for the second year, I believe it is, says, hey, her daughters are sitting in a class with not a qualified teacher for the subject. This would open up the field of teaching for a particular subject. It doesn't mean that we have to tie a person up all day long for teaching. It might be for a class period or whatever. And therefore, we have qualified people and therefore, the students don't feel like they're left out. And not only that, the community will see that as a school board and the administration, we are trying to address this issue and this possibly might be a way to do that. Thank you. Thank you. We will see if they're out there. Thank you. Good evening. Tanya Martin Cooper, East Curtis Street, Linden. Um, LEA president, and I'm coming to say um, congratulations to the staff that's newly appointed, and congratulations to the staff that has been elevated to new positions. I want to thank the board for bringing back the position of the 12 month instructional coach, um, moving Michael Pecos back to the PDRC, the Professional Development Learning Center. Um, I, we, I remember when it first started, and it was an integral part of our education. It helped us to move forward with professional development. And not only does it help for in-district professional development, but it helps teachers, staff train each other. And we can't do that without extra um, training. So thank you for approving the training for out-of-district training. Because when we get that out-of-district training, 
we can come back and turn Kia to someone else. And the PDRC is a great place to start. The leadership that you see there with the instructional leadership team is second to none. We saw our scores rise during the height of the instructional leadership team, and I would love to see it continue to grow. I also want to tell you that through um, NJEA, we do have extra um, leadership opportunities, and I would like to discuss that more at another time. Thank you very much, and thank you for continuing to support us through professional development. No one online? Anybody online? May I? Before we continue, there is another recognition. Mr. Sarapelia, I need your help here. Okay. We just had, um, you know, that we just bid farewell to Dianara Rosado Casada. But we also had an opportunity to appoint a new board member. And um, we had um, we, we had a job posting. We had eight applicants that were, ha were interviewed, and seven showed up, one did not, but um, we had an opportunity to select a board member from the really outstanding can candidates who applied for board member. Would you continue, Mr. Sarapedia? <laughs> Well, would you like to read the resolution? Or, yeah, okay. Um, so tonight, the Board of Education um, will be appointing Mariam Elway, I'm gonna be, I'm sorry if I El pronounce Hawaii. it. El Hawaii. to fill a vacant board seat with a term expiring 12-31-2025, pending a background check. I would need a uh, first and a second for that motion. I make a motion to, a to appoint, what's her name, how you pronounce it? <laughs> how you pronounce her name again, Mary Ann? Yeah, Mary Ann. Looks like El Washahi. Yes, El Shawahi. El Washahi. Yes. And, um, wait a second. Uh, all right. I didn't do it right. Go ahead. Did she, she do it right? Okay. No, she did not, but it's uh, okay. Yeah, I'm second. Miss Ulysse? Yes. Ms. Carrillo? Yes. Mr. Dela Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Berghammer? Yes. All right, yes. congratulations. Thank you. But, um, would she, could she come up and say something? Yes. All right, would, if you'd like to come up and share with the board, we'd like to hear from you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Maryam Obashahi. I would like to start off by saying that I'm, I'm honored to have the opportunity to get to apply for this position, let alone to you know, be appointed here today. I wanna thank everyone who voted. I wanna thank all the board members. Um, thank you for putting your trust in me and for allowing me to be a part of this, such an important entity in our small yet wonderful community. Um, I know I've just been appointed, but I vow that I will do my best as a upcoming board member um, to help better our education system and to help make a change, even if it's a minor one. Thank you. Thank you. Continuing. Once the background clears, we'll, we'll, we'll swear the new board member in and she'll take her seat up, up yes. here with the rest of you. So you understand the process. You would not be able to sit up here yet. You just was appointed. Now we have to do our background work. And after Once that, the state, it's completed. The, the state will provide clearance, hopefully in the next, hopefully sooner rather than later. And once we get the clearance from the state, then, then we'll swear her in and she can sit. So John, you have to send on documentation for I her? I have documentation for her tonight. Oh, so you're going to give it to her tonight yes. so she could follow up on what needs to get done. Mm -hmm. So get it done as soon as you can, because if you get it done as soon as you can, you can be here <laughs> next month, okay? All right. <laughs> this would be the new and unfinished business. Anyone? Oh. 
Wow. And we're coming to the end. Board member comments. Ms. Pino. Ms. Pino. Good evening, everyone. It's nice seeing you guys here, and welcome. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, we can't wait to hear all the good things that you have to bring to us, and we appreciate your voice out there, okay, because I know a lot of children don't have a voice, and you're going to be their voice for them, and I thank you for that, okay, because we have to advocate for all of them, no matter which one, who are they, okay? And congratulations to all the new appointees and to everyone that's here. Congratulations. It's nice to have you. And everyone have a good evening and good night. <clears throat> Thank you. Ms. Oh, Oops. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to congratulate everyone who uh, was appointed tonight. Uh, congratulations, Miriam. Um, and that's it. Okay. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll piggyback off of that, really. Um, congratulations to all new appointees. And to Ms. Shayla, thank you for the update. I think that's very important to understand what's <coughs> happening um, indoors of the schools because I think we're trying our best to understand it, being on this end. So having your input is, is awesome. And to Ms. Miriam, welcome. I'm excited to meet you and um, work together. Thank you. I'll be next, I'll be, I'll try to be quick. Um, congratulations to our retiree. Enjoy your retirement, go have a pina colada, well deserved. Marianne, congratulations on joining us. Hope you're here next month with us and we will speak moving forward. Miss Callie, congratulations on being here with us. I've known you since pre-K with Miss Perkins. So we're going way back also. Mm. You've grown and you've grown to be a beautiful young lady and the spots that you are in high school, reach for the stars. Don't stop where you are. You're gonna go places. Congratulations and whatever you have for us, bring it to our attention because you will be our, an extension of us, our eyes and our ears. <coughs> Thank you for being there. And congratulations to our new appointees and looking forward to our negotiations real soon. Thank you guys. I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. B. Well, I spoke earlier, but I just wanted to thank whoever left this on my desk. <laughs> I, do, I do not know who left it, but who left it? I know it's gonna find a place in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very, very much. And that's it for me, I, I had a, a wonderful meeting. Um, I'm really excited for students and our staff for this new year. And I know together we're going to change the world. Mm -hmm. And now Second I ask that. for an adjournment. Nobody wants to end this meeting? Nobody wants to end it. I, I guess not. Oh, yeah, I make a motion to, to close the meeting for the night. Second. second. A second. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't bring it to the table, so I can't. Ms. Shilise? Yes. Ms. Carello? Yes. Ms. Adela Cruz? Yes. Ms. Pino? Yes. And Dr. Berghammer? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.